Hello, Vintage Upward Water fans. This is T Mike here at Toledo Bend Lake making another video today. Today's video is going to be on the assembly of a 1971 9.5 Evinrude model 9122R. This beautiful motor is for Steph, and I'm going to document the assembly of it. So I've got it completely apart, painted, sanded, clean, painted, uh, rebuilt. I uh, brushed up the flywheel, rebuilt the magneto. There's the two side wings. I've rebuilt the carburetor. I've rebuilt the gear case and tested and cleaned up the power head and there's the stern bracket so I'm gonna document putting this thing together it's kind of tricky on how to do this I've done quite a few of them so I think I know the correct order once you put it back together in the right order all the pieces fall in place so if everybody's ready here we go so the first step is to put this first side lower cowling on and it fits on there's two bolts that go through the bottom here two bolts that go into the bottom right here and the top piece wraps around that pin. I'm gonna do that now. All right, once you got that side housing in, there's two nuts right here that hold it at the bottom. And then there's a bracket right here. There's two bolts right there and a third bolt on the other side that brackets on so I'm gonna do that right now that'll hold that side cowling on all right so we got that half the lower cowling on I actually went a little too fast you have to put this friction bar in place this friction bar this is the adjustment for it right here this screw is the adjustment for it. This friction bar is going to attach to both halves of these housing and that's what you apply the friction by screwing down this screw and that's what keeps the, house, the whole motor from turning left or right too fast. You can tighten it up right there. So put that in. Alright. And the power head is going to sit right here on this half but uh, first thing we got to do is put a bracket a brace that goes on that side that'll hold the power head in so I'm going to do that now All right it's this bracket you see the, the spring loaded bumper on it it goes right there Push it down in and slide around. That's going to attach to the power head. Now we're going to lay the power head down on here, and this this rubber mount with this screw hole is going to go right into there. And then we're going to set the power head in place and put the rubber mounts and a lot of other garbage in order here. So moving right along before I slip that power head in place I want to show you there's there's a little rubber mounts that we're gonna put in afterwards I slip on each side here on this side one on that side and then there's a there's a larger one larger rubber mount that goes right here that we're gonna to have to attach to 
and then there's this little rubber mount that's going to slide in place in there too so there's a lot of rubber mounts that's got to get it put in place after we put this power head on all right so i laid the power head in place uh, i took the nut and i hand tighten it on so it holds it in place so it don't fall out when i roll it on the side like this and you can see the bracket attaches here and there's another nut down there you got to attach that to this brace all right so i've got it uh attached tighten this bolt and tighten this bolt the brace and that one there so the motor is now affixed to this lower cowling which is affixed here and here so that's that's the easy part now comes the hard part got to slip this other side cowling on there and attach it to it uh, several things got to happen at the same time the rope guide has to go in place right there all right and after we're gonna get the notice how I got this tie wrapped up so it's out of the way once we're gonna get that side cover on we gotta attach the friction we gotta attach the rubber mounts here we gotta slip the rubber mounts here and then there's five screws that come through the other side that attach the two housings together so I'm gonna work on that now okay before we can slip that half of the cowling on I want to show you what we got to do uh, we got like four places to attach so there's a there's a rubber mount right in here that we're gonna attach with the screw right here we got to put uh, one of these one of these screws and attach that half of it so that when we slip the cowling on we can attach the other half right here all right then we're gonna take this rubber mount and we're gonna stick it in right here and we're gonna attach a screw on the outside holding that mount in so that the other half of the cowling can mount on it and we got to stick these rubber mounts in both sides the other one goes in right here right in there all right and then uh, this rubber mount slides right in here so as you can see there's one two three four five rubber mounts that hold this engine in place with the brackets and the rubber tips here that hold it in place not to mention you have to attach the friction rod through the holes in here so all that's got to be done in the next step this is the hard part I'm gonna work on it and come back to you well after about a half hour of fighting trying to get uh, that other cowling on the rubber mount in here that has the two screws here and here finally figured out that I think I got a broken bolt inside that rubber mount so I gotta take that bracket off get that rubber mount out and I'll show you if it is a broken bolt I'll have to replace that that rubber mount let's see what happens now here's the rubber mount and sure enough as I suspected there's the broken bolt inside of here that's stopping me from putting it on Alright, so I gotta go find this part or extract that bolt, one or the other, and get her back in. This, these are the problems that you come across 
trying to do the job when you got to do the job right. You miss that one bolt and the motor shakes and vibrates and doesn't operate properly. So I'm going to go looking in my spare parts for that part right there. Alright, I found a good part. Doesn't have that broken bolt in it. Found a good part. Now I've got to slip it in place here so I can get back to square one on this job. Here we go. Alright, finally success. Uh, if I can give you any tip at all to putting these hollows together it would be that when you connect the dots on these screws right here put them in loose put them in loose so they have some play until they're all in place and they're going to go around and screw them so I gotta tighten these two these two uh, those two one on each side of all these right here. I'm gonna do that now and then the next step is gonna be the five screws that go here, 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 and there. There's five screws that go in those spots. There's these bigger Phillips screws that go in those spots to pull everything together. So I'm going to do that now. Right, got uh, everything tightened up. All the screws tightened up that we talked about. And I've uh, adjusted the steering friction with that screw right there while it's easy to get to. Now there's two bolts, one right here ties this half together and one right here that ties this half together I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna call it a day been working on it all afternoon get back on it tomorrow and tomorrow while it's all apart the first thing we're gonna do is put in the handle right here so the mag and the fly was not the way the handle and the shift lever will come in next and we're gonna tuck in this exhaust hose where it goes right there. And then uh, we'll be pretty much ready to put the carb, the magneto, and the flywheel. <laughs> How about that? Looking really good, Steph. I think we found a big trouble with that broken bolt. And it's gonna turn out to be just fine. I'll see y'all tomorrow morning. Well, thanks for watching the video. I'd like to take this time to share with you some of the offerings that I have here at T-Mike's Vintage Outboards. Uh, the first thing is my eBay store. I have uh, over 2,000 parts in my eBay store, almost anything you need for your vintage outboard motors. Johnson and Evan Rood, 1950s and 60s, 20 horsepower and less. Have the link to my eBay store and all of these services down below in the description. Second thing is technical consulting. I offer technical consulting to help with your, uh, your outboards, $40 an hour. Just buy one of these and you get an hour's worth of consulting. If it's five or ten minutes of a, of a question or two and you want to call me, it's free. Just call me. My phone number is 337-278-5429. Answer my phone all the time. All right. Next thing I, I, I do is I started selling kits for your motors. I have a master tune-up kit for doing your uh, ignition magnetos. I have the coils, points and condensers. Uh, spark plug wire, spark plugs, and I also sell all of these parts individually. All right. Uh, next thing I started offering now is fuel pump conversion kits, the FPCs to upgrade from a dual line to a single line. Offer a kit for the 7.5s, for the 10 horsepowers, and for the 15 and 18 horsepowers. All right. Next thing I do is I service, repair, and restore. I've done over 130 full restores. I do a light restore for 950. I do a full restore for 1250, and I do service and repair work for 40 dollars an hour plus parts. All right, and also I have uh, T Mike caps and uh, mouse pads for sale. All right, join the T Mike club and buy you some of these. So the links for all this are down below, and also I have over 280 videos now on everything you need to know. If you come up with something that you find I don't have a video for. Just hit me up on this channel or on my phone number, and I'll try to do it for you. Thanks so much, and remember, always remember, and never forget, we're doing it 
one motor at a time.